So, as you know, I'm a huge fan of Affinity Suite and Affinity Designer especially, and I'm always trying to find new ways to be able to do what I need to do in the most efficient way possible. So today I'm going to list out four different ways that you can be more efficient using Affinity Designer. So let's get started with number one, which is learning the keyboard shortcuts. So some of the keyboard shortcuts that I've recently found that I've been using a lot is using the semicolon button to turn on and off snapping. So you can see it up here. If I press the semicolon button, you can see it turning on and off. So with it on, things snap to the midpoint, snap to other shapes. Whereas if I turn it off, now I'm free to move however I like. So really cool one. Another one is using the backslash button, which if you look at the colors up here, if you press backslash, it gets rid of the color. And similarly, if you press X, you can swap which color you're looking at, whether it's the stroke or the fill color. And then if you hit backslash again, it can get rid of the color completely. And thirdly is using control and the numbers, which changes how far you'll zoom to the canvas. So control and one takes you up to 100%, which you can see in the top there. Control and two, 200%. Control and three is 400%. Control and four, 800%. And you can do control and zero, which is, I believe, fit everything to the screen. So those little shortcuts have been super useful for my recent work because being able to zoom in and out constantly has been really helpful. So learn those keyboard shortcuts. Down in the description will be a PDF from Affinity themselves or Serif, I think they're called with their keyboard shortcut cheat sheet, which is for Windows, Mac and iPad as well. So make sure you check that out if you're interested. So on to number two, which is symbols. Now I do have a video which you can check out up here which goes through kind of how to use symbols in the easiest way possible. So I'll quickly show you here what symbols are. And that is if you have an item that you're going to be using more than once, at least you can create a symbol and then you can use this symbol to have as many iterations of that item as much as you want. And if you change the color, they will all change together. If you change anything like the stroke, if you make them bigger, smaller, however it is, They'll all change together so it definitely saves you a lot of time especially if you're going to be making something over and over again just make it a symbol and then you can paste it in as many times as you like so next up on the list is using the assets panel so if we jump into this now over on the side if you don't have the assets window open you can go to view studio and assets now what you can do with this asset panel is put in anything that you use over multiple documents such as logos or shapes or specific items that you use multiple times. You can even download different assets from different websites which have multiple shapes which you can use over different documents as well such as using any of these ones which I have no idea what that is but it's something cool or even something as simple as this heart which I can now change the color of, change this fill of everything like that so if i'm going to be using over and over again so you can add assets into your own category like i have here which show the ones that i use for when i'm making things for instagram i've got my logo so i can easily just bring over my logo and pop it on whatever i'm making if i need it got the twitch logo so anything that you're going to use multiple times if you need it in one place where you don't need to edit it and you don't need to look for the file itself stick it in your assets panel so you'll be able to use it whenever you need it all right, finally, we've got number four, which is styles. Now, what's really good with the assets panel is that you can save shapes and their actual colors and effects to them as well. However, if you wanted to just save the effects, this is where the styles comes in. So if, if you head over to the right hand side here, you've got the styles panel, which if, again, if you don't have it, head up to view studio and styles. And again, you can group them however you like, name them, categorize them however you like. So say for example, we have this heart and we give it a nice fill color. We give it a nice effect of an inner glow. Perfect. Now let's say we wanted to paste this style over to this shape, which you could use the shortcut of control C on the effect that you like, and then control shift and V to paste it over to the other object. Great. But now I have to keep going back to this heart to be able to do that over and over again if I copy a different thing. So if we undo that, what we can do is if you can select the heart for whatever you like the styles for, go over to styles, hit the three 
or is it four lines, however many lines that is, and go to add style from selection and you'll see it pop up here. Now, anytime we have an item that we want, which we want looking a specific way, we just literally click that button and no matter what it is, you can paste it over and you'll be able to save that style and use it over multiple documents. Save you having to find the same style, the same colors, the same everything. Now, what's also great with these styles is that they work with text as well, and it also affects the text font. So I've just written out a little bit of text here and using any one of these, if I click them, it'll increase the size and the actual font and color for what I usually use for. And I can just cycle through whichever one I want, if I remember which one is which, and it's a lot easier. So when I make my posts for Instagram, I tend to use these to be able to just easily map out everything that I want really quickly, click a button, I've got everything formatted how I like it. So it saves a huge amount of time. So that's it, really quick video about four different ways that you can be a little bit more efficient in Affinity Designer because saving as much time as possible is definitely worth it. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, make sure you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, as well as make sure you hit the notification bell as well because we're gonna be going live hopefully once a month. Only did a live stream recently and it was great. Started doing some drawings. So definitely if you have any questions, you can hit me up live on those streams. Ask me any question I can go through kind of what you're having trouble with to make sure you look out for future live sessions. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed these. If you've got any other tips, drop them in the comments below about how you can be more efficient in Affinity Designer. I love learning from you guys as much as you like learning from me. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.